Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on modify graph edge weights. And in this one you're given an undirected weighted graph containing nodes from 0 to n minus 1 and an injury rate edges where you have an edge and weight and it's undirected. And some edges have a weight of negative 1 and some have a positive weight. Your task is to modify all edges with a weight of negative 1 by assigning them positive integer values in a range of 1 to um, 2 times 10 to the 9th so that the shortest distance between the node source and destination becomes equal to a target. And if there are multiple modifications that make the shortest distance, any of them is correct. Return an array containing all the edges, even unmodified, in any order if it's possible to make the shortest distance from source to destination equal to target or an empty array if it's not. And you're not allowed to modify weights of any edges with initial positive weights, so only negative weights. So let's take a look at this first example. So this 4 to 1 is actually negative 1 to start off. This 2 to 0 is negative 1 to start off as well. And then this 0 to 3 is negative 1 as well. And this is negative 1 as well. So basically we're trying to go from a 0 to a 1, so which is this path here. So because this is not like as long as we give this any value it doesn't really matter what we give it taking this path is never going to be optimal right like if we give this a one um all we have to do is just make this path the length of the target and then if you go here and back that's not going to work so essentially we can give these nodes any values we want to make this path equal to five so whatever we want so we can say like let's just make this like one one and three and that'll work or we can do something else we can go like three one one or two two one or whatever you want as long as the whole path is equal to the target it's fine okay and then in example two so zero one is negative one and this is five and you're trying to go from zero to two with a target of six so you can't do that because the smallest value you can make this is a one and if you make this a one this will be seven right so one two five seven so this doesn't work and so let's take a look at the third one. So one zero is four, one two is three, um, two three is five, and then this is negative one, yeah. Okay, and we're trying to go from two to six. Uh, actually, sorry, from zero to two with a target of six. And so this is doable, we can just change this value to a one, and then this is six. Um, so the first thing right off the bat we can figure out is, let's say, let's say we have some values here. Like, let's say this value is actually negative one, but these values are really small. or not even that small. Let's just say, let's just change this value to a two and see what happens. So if we change this value to a two, this path is five. And we, we're not allowed to change these values, right? So we can't do anything here. So if we have a path that is less than the target, if our shortest path is less than the target, without changing any of these. So we just say like, we can't traverse any node that's negative one. And if the shortest path is less than the target, which it is, we can't ever get the shortest path to be the target because we can't get rid of this path in any way. So we can write that down. So first, get shortest path without negative one nodes. So don't even include them in the graph. If this is less than target, return empty array. Okay. What about if it's equal to the target? So if this is three, so now our shortest path is equal to the target. So that's pretty easy. So basically our shortest path without any of these nodes is equal to the target and the target can only be 10 to the ninth. But the node value we're allowed to pick is um, two times 10 to the ninth. So we can just say like, let's just make every single negative one value two, two times 10 to the ninth. So if shortest path without one nodes equals target set all negative one nodes to two times 10 to the ninth. And then that will make sure that those nodes are never going to be in the shortest path. Okay. So then we have the third case, right? So we, we take the shortest path without these. So if our path is greater than the target, this is the, this is the one we have to deal with. So if shortest path, greater than target, then we have to do stuff. So basically what we need to do here is we need to figure out a way 
how to set some of these negative ones to some values without actually um, with making sure that that path is a target. And then everything outside of the path, every negative one node outside of the path, we can just set to infinity or basically infinity. So if we have some example of that, so let's say we have some graph like this and let's say maybe we're trying to get from here to here. And let's maybe move some of these nodes around, I guess. So maybe this connects like this, and then this connects over here. So maybe we have something like this, right? And let's actually do this. So something like this, we have this like circle thing. And maybe we have some other paths, like maybe there's a path here. Yeah, let's just leave it like this. And so let's say our target is like 20 and we have some of these nodes and some of these, some of these have values. So let's say, like I said, let's say we, we can't get here. Um, let's say we can't get here. L let's say, let's say actually they're all, let, let's just have one value. Let's just have one value and this is like 20 and everything else is negative one. So what we can do is it doesn't matter which ones, but we essentially we can turn on edges by giving them a value of one because that's the smallest value. And the thing is, if we have a bunch of negative one edges in a path, right? If we have like a bunch of negative one edges, we can give them all a value of one and then just give one of the edges in the path the difference because we're trying to get to some target, right? And if we have a bunch of edges, doesn't matter how many, we can always just make the edges a value of one and then, and then because we can make any edge up to twice the target, we can just get the difference there, right? So if the target's like 500, and we have like five edges, we can just say like one, 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 496. So the simplest thing to do is just keep the edges at one, keep them as minimal as possible and see, can I get a shortest path that's less than the target? And we're gonna be turning on these edges one at a time. And if we turn on edges one at a time, it's guaranteed that like, let's say we are turning on edges and then we turn on one of the edges and we happen to get a shortest path that's less than the target. Well, before turning on that edge, there was no way to do it. So that edge needs to be in the way we did it, right? And we know that like everything else that's not turned on, we can just set to infinity basically and guarantee that our path is like equal to the target. So let's kind of walk through how that works. So essentially imagine in this graph, this is the only edge present in the graph. So all these are negative one, so they won't be present. So basically when we try to go from here to here, we won't be able to because there is no way to cross. Like all, all of these with no value, let's just say that they don't, they don't exist. So let's just say we like start turning on some edges. So we'll just say like, okay, well, we'll turn on this edge. And by turning on, I mean, we'll just set the value to one and we'll put it in the graph. So we still can't get to the end here. So we'll turn on some other edge and it doesn't really matter the order. So let's say we turn on this edge. We still can't get to the end. Let's say we turn on this edge. We still can't get to the end, right? There's no way to get there. And let's say we turn on this edge and now we can. So with this thing that we did, right? We just set these values. So right now we can get here. There's only one way, I think. Yeah, there's only one way to cross and that's gonna be this. So what we can do is we can say, okay, well, we found a shortest path, it's two. What's the last edge we added here? We're trying to get 20. So let's just set that last edge that we set to one to the difference of what we need. So we need 20, we have two, so let's just add 18. So instead we'll just say like the last edge we added is this. And now that our shortest path is 20, we'll just say, well, everything else that's negative one, we'll just make it infinity. So let's make this infinity. Let's make this infinity. Let's make this infinity. And there we go, right? There is no other, there is no other way to get here. Like the shortest path is basically 20. It's this, because if we, if we try anything else, like if we go this way, we get infinity. If we go this way, we get infinity. So hopefully that makes sense. Like essentially we're gonna be turning on one edge at a time, keep calculating the shortest path. Then whenever we get, our goal is to get a shortest path less than or equal to target. Once we do take the edge that we added and add the difference of target minus shortest path. 
So that's kind of the idea. We're, we're going to keep turning on edges and we're making them as small as possible. That's why we're making them one because all we need is a number less than the target. And if we're not able to do that, um, like eventually we have to be able to do that basically. So like another simple example is let's say we have this square and these are edges and let's say our, or these are nodes and let's say our targets like one and we start here and we end up here. So let's say we just happen to turn on this edge and this edge and this edge. Well, our shortest path is three, so we still can't do it. But once we turn on the last one, then we're able to do it. So, so we can turn, like, it doesn't really matter which way you, which way you turn these on. Like, if you think about it, like if our shortest path is one, like we can, we can go in this order. We can't cross, can't cross. So we can only cross once we turn this on. And as soon as we turn this on, this will be our shortest path. And then the nodes that we already turned on, um, you don't need to change them because without this node, we weren't able to get our shortest path. And so the only thing you have to do, you have to do make sure just in case is everything you didn't turn on, just make that infinity because that might give you a better shortest path. So hopefully that makes sense now why it's as simple as we just turn on one node at a time. If we do get something that's less, then we can just say, okay, let's get that node to be the difference and let's make everything else infinity. And if let's say, um, let's say our target here was like, or, or let's just, let's just keep it simple, right? Let's just say this is our edges and our target was whatever. Then we, then we basically know, even if we turn these on, we still can't cross. So you will have cases where you turn everything on and you still won't have a shortest path or your shortest path will be too big or whatever. Right, like another simple scenario is like, let's say this is our stuff and we're trying to go here and our target's one, like no matter what we change this to, it's not gonna work. But that's the basic idea of this is we pretty much just have a graph without the negative ones. We look for these two cases here and then we start turning on one at a time and just run tricksters on it. And it's just like a basic tricksters. All right, so let's take a look, quite a lot of code. I do think this is probably the hardest problem of this month. So definitely a tricky one. And I think I remember doing this in a leak code contest like a year ago or something, it was definitely tricky. I think I did it a different way, but this makes a lot more sense with these turning on values one at a time, but let's take a look. So we're gonna have a graph and the format I used is, so for every node, because for every node we wanna store a node and a distance and we wanna access that in oh, one time. So like for node X, we wanna have a list of children. So like node Y with a distance of something, that's why you have a nested graph. So nested graph, and then this is what I'm gonna turn every node's value to if if we already have a shortest path, because you can't make it infinity, this is like the cap, so we'll just make it this. You can make it anything from like, I think target 10 to the nine, so you can do like 10 minus one or something that'll work as well, as long as you make it big enough to not be in the shortest path. So we get our nodes, and then basically, if our node is not negative one, then we will add it to the graph. And it's bi-directional, so we'll add it both. Then we'll run Jixtra, which I'll later show you, but it's just the basic Jixtra from our source to the destination. So this is essentially Jixtra with no negative one nodes. If this is less than the target, it doesn't matter what we do. Like, like let's say our target's five here, and we're able to get here somehow. Like, let's say these are negative one, but this happens to be like four. It doesn't matter what we make these. Like, even if this path is shorter, um, this is we you can't make a shortest path five if you already have four and you can't change any value in your path, right? So if this is the case, this is impossible, so then we're done. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we're gonna go through every single edge and if it's already turned on, or sorry, if it's not turned on, we'll, we'll uh, or sorry, if it is turned on, we'll continue, right? So if it's not negative one, we can't change it, so we'll just move on to the next one. Um, Otherwise, we have to check, is our shortest path the target? And if our shortest path is the target, then basically we've already achieved a shortest path, right? Like, like let's say these were all negative one and we turned on this one, then we'll say like, okay, we'll just make this five. And now our shortest path is the target. So every other node we get that will be negative one, we'll just make the, the infinity basically. So if we already have achieved shortest path equals target, we'll just make infinity. Otherwise we'll set this node to one we'll add it to the graph so now it can be traversed. We'll calculate a new current distance. And if we are able to get a shortest path that's less than or equal to the target, we'll just set this current node that we just turned on to the difference to make sure that our shortest path is equal to the target. And then every other node we encounter from here on or every other edge will set equal to infinity. 
And then finally, at the end, we just check, were we able to get our shortest path equal to the target? If yes, return edges, because we were modifying them. Otherwise, just return the empty array. And then we have a basic Jigstra. So you just have a priority queue, a visited set, and you get your current distance, your current node. And if it's visited, you continue and so on. If it's destination, return the total distance. Um, and that, that this is all just standard Jigstras, right? Go through all the neighbors of the node. If they're not in visited, then add the distance it took to get to the node plus the distance um, from the node to the child and all that other stuff. And if we were not able to get to the destination, then just return max or infinity or whatever you want. Um, yeah. So it's basically all there. Definitely a tough problem. Um, and I think my runtime was not the best. I think you can optimize some stuff in Jigstras, but I didn't really care too much about it. And I think a lot of this is also because I use like a priority queue, set, all these other things instead of arrays, it's slower. So yeah, I think if you use like all static stuff, it'll be faster. Um, but we can talk about runtime and all that. <clears throat> so Jigstras with the priority queue is typically, I think V plus, or I think it's E plus V log E if I remember correctly, where E is the edges and V is the vertices. And then we're basically running Jigstras for every single edge worst case. So this is going to be like this times E. And then the space. So, um, so this graph is going to contain every node and every edge. So that's like E plus V. And then See current distance, edge, all that other stuff. So in Jixtras, so typically Jixtras in the heap, like I think typically Jixtras is actually worst case n squared or v squared, but people usually just write v plus e as well for the space because typically you only have v nodes roughly um, in the priority queue. So yeah, or, or like depending, depending on your total edges. Um, yeah, yeah, I think actually yeah, I don't think you can have more than like E plus V space because basically you're 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 going through every edge once in Jigstras. So for every edge you can have multiple nodes. So I think it's just like O of E or something. I never get this thing right. But yeah, and I don't think I can actually run this because I think this is actually too long, which is kind of funny. Um But yeah, that's gonna be all for this one. Hopefully it was helpful. Definitely a tough problem, I think, one of the tougher ones of the month. Um, hopefully this was useful. Hopefully the picture showed you how like it doesn't really matter which nodes you turn on. You're going to get the same thing. You just need one solution and then you can just make your value whatever you want. And hopefully it makes sense why like as soon as you get one solution, you can just say everything that's not in my path now, I'll just make infinity. And then that will ensure that my path is the shortest path. Um, yeah, but that's going to be all for this one. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.